सुप्रीम कोर्ट ऑर्डर ऑन डिफॉल्ट बेल प्रोहिबिशन ऑन मेकिंग ऋतु छाबड़िया केस एज अ बेसिस सेंटर फाइल्ड द एप्लीकेशन सुप्रीम कोर्ट एक्सप्रेस्ड कंसर्न ओवर द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द पॉश एक्ट ऑर्डर्ड टू बी स्ट्रिक्टली इम्प्लीमेंटेड द पर्पज ऑफ द लॉ इज टू प्रिवेंट सेक्सुअल हेरासमेंट RBI's gold reserve increased 5% increase over last year. Rising inflation became the reason. Portable phone charging device Roshni came up in news. The device is capable of continuous work. Salt water has been used. And America will return historical statues to India. They are worth more than 1.2 million dollars. They also include an idol of Kamdev. Recently, the Supreme Court gave an important decision regarding the default bail. In this, the Apex Court has directed the lower courts to decide the pending default bail petitions. However, the court has said that the default bail be considered without putting into consideration the Ritu Chhabria versus Union of India and others case actually in the past the enforcement directorate had filed a petition in the supreme court challenging a decision of the delhi high court in this default bail was granted to an accused on the basis of ritu chhabria case In the Ritu Chhabria case it was observed that the investigating officers routinely filed incomplete or supplementary charge sheets within a period of 60 or 90 days to prevent the accused from seeking default bail that's why the court had said that the government machinery cannot deprive the accused of their right to default bail also the right to default bail under section 1672 of crpc is not just a statutory right but a fundamental right guaranteed under article 21 of the constitution but the government believes that due to this decision the central agencies may face difficulties therefore the center has also filed an application to withdraw decision of the ritu chhabria case Actually when the police arrest a person for any crime then after appearing in the court he is sent to judicial custody now if the person demands bail and does not get bail then default bail is the only way to get out of jail although it has some conditions accordingly if the concerned investigating officer fails to file the charge sheet within 60 days the accused shall be entitled to default bail However for certain categories of offenses the prescribed period for filing charge sheet is 90 days Recently the Supreme Court expressed concern about sexual harassment of women at the workplace it highlighted the loopholes in the implementation of the POSH that is sexual harassment prevention prohibition and redressal act 2013 In the recent context out of 30 national sports federations only 16 federations have constituted mandatory internal complaints committees that's why the apex court has ordered the center state and union territories to strictly implement this act along with this it has been asked to ensure that internal complaints committees are formed in all government bodies it should be noted that the posh act was brought in the year 2013 with a view to address the issue of sexual harassment of women at workplace it aims to create a safe and conducive work environment for women and provide protection against sexual harassment the posh act includes acts such as physical contact and sexual advances demands or request for sexual favors making obscene remarks showing obscene pictures and any other unwelcome physical verbal or non verbal behavior also an implicit or explicit promise of preferential treatment in employment an implicit threat of harmful treatment threats about current or future employment in the workplace are also classified as sexual harassment it also includes interference with work or abusive behavior affecting an intimidating or offensive or hostile work environment health or safety the law requires any employer with more than 10 employees to set up an internal complaints committee In case of sexual harassment any female employee can formally lodge a complaint here 
Further, it provides for setting up of a local committee in each district of the country to receive complaints from the informal sector, including women and domestic workers employed in firms with less than 10 employees. In the past, violence between two communities was witnessed in Manipur. There was tremendous opposition to the demand for giving tribe status to the Metei community. Now the Kuki tribe has also placed its demand before the government. Recently, 10 MLAs of the Kuki tribe have demanded a separate administration for the community before Manipur Chief Minister Birain Singh. That is, now a separate state is being demanded for the Kuki tribe. An organization called Kuki State Demand Committee of the Kuki community has once again put forward the demand of making Kuki land before the government. The territory of Kuki land included the southern hills which surround the Imphal Valley on three sides, the Kuki dominated Churachandpur district Chandel, which has a mix of Kuki and Naga populations, and even parts of Naga dominated Tameenglong and Ukrul. Let us tell you that in Manipur, Metei community dominates in the valley area, whereas Kuki dominates in the hilly areas. According to the 2011 census, the Kuki community accounts for about 25% of the population of the state of Manipur. Jhum cultivation is the main source of livelihood of this community. Kuki communities are found in all the states of the northeast except Arunachal Pradesh. Along with this, people of this community also reside in the neighboring country Myanmar. Recently, the Ministry of Home Affairs put forward the Model Prisoners Act 2023 in place of the British era prison law. Many changes have been made in place of the old law. The act will mainly focus on the reformation and rehabilitation of prisoners. The Bureau of Police Research and Development has prepared this draft after extensive consultations with various state prison officials and experts, etc. Talking about the features of the Model Prisoners Act, provisions have been made for punishment for prisoners and jail staff for using banned items like mobile phones in jail. Along with this, a proposal for setting up and managing a high-security jail has been put forward. The Act also includes legal aid, payroll and premature release options for prisoners to promote good conduct. Along with this, special provisions have been made in the draft for women and transgender prisoners, and the physical and mental welfare of the prisoners has also been talked about. Provision has been made for the use of modern technology to bring transparency in the jail administration. Apart from this, the facility of video conferencing with the courts will also be provided in the Model Prisoners Act. Let us tell you that the Ministry of Home Affairs has given many arguments behind changing the existing law. The ministry said the existing Law Prisons Act of 1894 is a pre-independence law and is almost 130 years old. Along with this, two other related laws, the Prisoners Act 1900 and the Transfer of Prisoners Act 1950 are also several decades old. These decades old rules are incapable of meeting the demands of the present day. In such a situation, the Model Prisoners Act 2023 will prove to be a useful step in the direction of jail management. Recently, the Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways launched the Green Port Guidelines 2023. It has been named Green Sea. The guideline is based on the vision of enhancing efficiency with the ecosystem in port development operation and maintenance. Its purpose is to achieve the goal of zero carbon emissions. Under this, a target has been set to prepare a comprehensive action plan for major ports. It also plans to provide opportunities for green plan implementation and achieving the sustainable development goals in order to reduce carbon emissions within the stipulated time frame. Apart from this, provision has been made to adopt the Global Green Reporting Initiative standard. Promotion of best practices and technologies for green port development and operations is also a major agenda under it. In the issued guidelines, it has been said to reduce waste through reduce, reuse, repurpose and recycle to achieve zero waste target by port operations. Along with this, there is a provision to create a rating system for assessing and benchmarking the environmental performance of ports. Experts say that this will generate new opportunities for innovation, investment, employment and cooperation in this area. 
Along with this, competition among the ports will be encouraged by improving the quality. In addition, there will be reduction in operational cost through optimum utilization of resources and reduction in wastage. Recently, the National Medical Commission or NMC has issued a notification saying that now all doctors in the country will have to register themselves to practice. Along with this, a UID will be provided to each doctor. Doctors recognized under the National Medical Commission Act 2019 will be considered eligible for registration in the National Medical Register only after passing the exit exam. Information related to doctors such as their registration number, their qualification, name of the institution from which MBBS degree is awarded, etc. will be publicly available on the NMC website. Along with this, doctors who have returned from abroad after studying medicine can also get themselves registered to render their services in India. These doctors will be eligible for registration in NMR after passing the exit examination to be conducted under Section 15 of the Act and fulfilling all the conditions of the Foreign Medical Graduate Regulation 2021. Let us tell you that UID will be prepared by the Ethics and Medical Registration Board and the National Medical Commission. All doctors enrolled in the National Medical Register and State Medical Registers who do not yet have registration numbers as per the notification issued by NMC will be required to update the same on the web portal of EMRB within a time frame of three months. The license once issued will be valid for five years. Doctors will have the option to practice in any state. Talking about the National Medical Commission Act 2019, NMC was formed in the year 2019 by abolishing the Medical Council of India. The main objectives of NMC are to improve the field of medical education and ensure availability of adequate and high-quality doctors in all parts of the country. Recently, RBI has directed all the banks and financial institutions to adopt alternative reference rate by 1st July. In this, emphasis has been laid on adopting a system like SOFR that is Secured Overnight Financing Rate. Apart from this, MIFOR that is Modified Mumbai Interbank Forward Outright Rate can also be used. Along with this, the central bank said about phasing out LIBOR that is London Interbank Offer Rate and MIFOR or Mumbai Interbank Forward Outright Rate. Let us tell you that LIBOR is a benchmark interest rate at which major global banks lend to each other. It is managed by the Intercontinental Exchange. Significantly, LIBOR's name had come up in several scams and manipulations in the past, after which its credibility has come under question. This is the reason why secured overnight financing rate will be used in the place of LIBOR. Talking about SOFR, it is a comprehensive measure of the cost of overnight borrowing collateralized by the US Treasury securities in the repo market. It is based on actual market activity. It is considered better than LIBOR. It is decided on the basis of transaction data rather than estimated lending rates. Significantly, SOFR is considered more accurate and safer. It provides a strong pricing benchmark for financial transactions. According to the recent report of the World Gold Council, there has been an increase in the gold reserves of the Reserve Bank of India or RBI. In the financial year 2023, the gold reserves of RBI recorded 794.64 metric tons of gold, which is 5% more than the previous financial year. Significantly, RBI is included in the list of top five central banks of the world who are currently buying gold. According to experts, in order to diversify its overall reserves, the RBI has taken steps towards buying gold. According to experts, the central bank has made this change in its strategy in view of events related to negative interest rates, weakening of the dollar and geopolitical uncertainty in the past. Several reasons have been responsible for the increase in gold reserves in the last few years. Keeping in view the rising inflation and global market, RBI is adding gold to its reserves to safeguard its returns. Significantly, gold is considered the safest asset because at global level, it generally maintains its liquidity 
has an international price and can be traded at any time. According to the report, in the year 2022, the central banks around the world made a different record by buying 1,136 tons of gold. Let us tell you that not only RBI but the central banks of other countries are also buying gold. These include countries like China, Singapore, Turkey. According to the report of gold demand trends, in the first quarter of the year 2023, Singapore alone has bought the maximum 69 tons of gold. Recently, a research was published in the Journal of Insect Conservation. In this, researchers shed light on the migration patterns of milkweed butterflies in southern India. This includes the migration and conservation of butterflies due to land use change, habitat degradation and climate change. In fact, millions of milkweed butterflies migrate between the eastern and western ghats in southern India to protect themselves during the summer season. According to research, during this time, the wings of the butterflies get damaged by traveling towards the east. Researchers say that the migration of milkweed butterflies is very important for the ecosystem. The reason for this is that they move from one place to another as pollinators. However, habitat destruction and climate change are threatening their migration. In such a way, by studying their migration patterns and food habits, interrelationship between plant and animal can be established. This will help in protecting the ecosystem. Milkweed butterflies are a group belonging to the brush-footed butterfly family Nymphalidae. It contains about 300 species, including the monarch butterfly. Their feathers are usually brown or orange in color. Black and white patterns are present on these. The Western Ghats are often in the limelight for their biodiversity. Recently, the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology has made a new disclosure in its study about the Pal Ghat gap in the Western Ghats. It has been said in the latest research that more than 450 species of trees are found here, including some special and rare tree species. According to recent reports, these species of trees have been present south of the Pal Ghat gap for more than 130 million years, including some tree species like Magnolia Champaka. Palghat Gap is an area about 40 km wide between the hills of Nilgiris and Annamalai, which connects Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu to Palakkad in Kerala on one side. Species found to the north and south of this gap are biologically and geographically very different. According to experts, the Palghat Gap originated after the separation of Australia and Africa from the Gondwana land. However, after this, the volcanic eruption between India and Madagascar is also considered to be the reason for the construction of Pal Ghat Pass. Recently, for the first time after three decades, the Ghadiyal was seen in Pakistan's Punjab province. They became extinct years ago from Punjab regions of both India and Pakistan. According to the Pakistan Wildlife Conservation Strategy Report in the year 1978, Ghadiyals had become extinct from most of the rivers of Pakistan. Experts attribute the extinction to the construction of barrages, illegal killing for the skin trade, and use of gill nets for fishing. However, in the year 2017, the Ghadiyal was released again in the Bias River. Between 2017 and 2021, about 94 Ghadiyals were released into the Bias River. Its sole purpose was to bring the species back to the rivers. Significantly, ghadiyals are freshwater crocodiles that eat fish. They are characterized by a narrow nose or snout. These are considered a good indicator of clean river water. Historically, alligators were found in the river systems present in the southern parts of India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan and Nepal. Their major population in India is present in Girwa River of Uttar Pradesh, Son River of Madhya Pradesh, Ram Ganga of Uttarakhand, Gandak of Bihar, Chambal of Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh and Mahanadi of Odisha. Chambal River has the largest population of Ghadiyal. They are currently listed as critically endangered on the IUCN Red List. It is included under Schedule 1 of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act. Recently, the portable phone charging device manufactured by the National Institute of Ocean Technology has become the center of discussion. This portable device manufactured by NIOT has been named Roshni. 
made in the shape of a lantern eco friendly batteries have been used in this device in which sea water or salty water or brine has been used after several tests it was found that if the sea water or brine present in this device is changed every 12 hours it can work continuously the life expectancy of the electrodes used in the device is 500 hours the researchers said that the salt water device mainly works on the principle of ionization the device has a leak proof coating which contains an anode made of magnesium and a cathode an activated carbon compound sea water or salty water acts as an electrolyte significantly the ion comes into existence from the reaction of the anode and the salt water along with this after the ion reaction transfer takes place at the cathode which produces energy talking about the structure of this device led bulbs have been installed in the front and bottom area which can be used as reading lights a shocking thing related to permafrost has come to light it was cited in a study published in the journal nature communications according to the research the melting of permafrost is expected to destabilize thousands of industrial sites and associated contaminated areas in the arctic due to this there is a possibility of spreading of poisonous substances in the entire area scientists say that by the end of this century about 2100 industrial sites and 10000 contaminated sites are likely to be affected significantly contrary to the common perception the arctic is not an uninhabited and untouched area It is dotted with countless industrial facilities such as oil fields and pipelines, mines and military bases. Worryingly, all infrastructure is built on permafrost. Also, these industrial wastes have been buried under the permafrost. The reason for burying these wastes under the permafrost was the claim of scientists in the 1990s that it would be permanently stable. Industrial waste types studied include drilling and mining waste, drilling muds and fluids, mine waste heavy metals fuels and radioactive waste because climate change is causing the arctic to warm almost four times faster than the rest of the planet as a result the permafrost is melting rapidly thus it can destabilize not only industrial sites but also contaminated areas scientists have warned that once instability occurs toxic substances will spread throughout the region This will threaten the health of many species living there and the people who depend on them. Along with this biodiversity will also be harmed. Significantly permafrost is an area that is covered with ice for at least 2 consecutive years due to a temperature below 0 degree Celsius. These permanently frozen regions are found in the high mountain regions and high latitudes of the earth that is north and south poles. Recently America's famous Metropolitan Museum of Art has ordered the return of 15 ancient idols of India. It includes artifacts of ancient and historical importance from the 1st century BC to the 11th century AD. At present their value is said to be more than 1.2 million dollars. These ancient artifacts include objects made of terracotta, copper and stone. It has a terracotta sculpture of a yakshini carrying a child. which is said to be related to the shunga period apart from this the idol of kamdev received from jammu and kashmir of 8th century is also included among the antiques there is also an attractive sculpture of a dancer made of sandstone which is said to be worth 1 lakh us dollars let us tell you that metropolitan museum of art is located in new york city america it was established in the year 1870 it is counted among the best museums in the world More than 20 lakh artifacts are stored in this museum. Recently the MIT handed over 16 artifacts to India which reached there through smuggling and other means. Objects of historical importance are brought back from abroad under a process. Antiques that are returned are usually handed over to Indian high commissions abroad. The Ministry of External Affairs then informs the ASI who is the custodian of such repatriated articles. The ASI then sends a team to verify the items after which a decision is taken about their physical return to India. Now it's time for the practice questions based on the bulletin. 
Questions based on today's bulletin are first question is consider the following statements related to default bail. One section 167-2 of CRPC provides for default bail. Two, if the concerned investigating officer fails to file the charge sheet within 60 days, the accused is entitled to default bail. Which of the above given statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. Next question is consider the following statements. One, the Model Prisons Act 2023 has been brought in place of the British era prison law. Two, under this act, the prisoners will be provided with facilities like mobile phones, which were restricted till now. Three, apart from this, special provisions have been made for women and transgender prisoners in this act. Which of the above given statements is or are correct? One and two only, two and three only, one and three only, or all of the above. Next question is consider the following statements. One, in the financial year 2023, 794.64 metric tons of gold were recorded in the gold reserve of RBI. Two, it is 2% more than the previous financial year. Which of the above given statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. Next question is consider the following statements. One, milkweed butterflies are a group belonging to the brush-footed butterfly family that is Nymphalidae. Two, these butterflies migrate between the eastern and western ghats in southern India to protect themselves during the summer season. Which of the above given statements is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. Last question is consider the following statements. One, the Roshni is a portable phone charging device. Two, eco-friendly batteries have been used in this device made up in the shape of a lantern. Three, fresh water is used in its battery. Which of the above given statements is or are correct? One and two only, two and three only, one and three only, or all of the above. Recently, Housing and Urban Affairs Minister Dr. Hardeep Singh Puri has launched the My Life, My City campaign. This will last for about three weeks. Under this RRR, that is Reduce, Reuse and Recycle Centers, will be set up in the cities. The general public can deposit old books, clothes, toys and used plastic at these centers. After this, they can be recycled here and used again. According to the ministry, such centers will be launched across the country. This campaign will strengthen the resolve of citizens under Swachh Bharat Mission Urban 2.0. Its purpose is to make citizens aware of the protection of the environment by changing their everyday habits. Jalli Kattu, the traditional sport of the South Indian state of Tamil Nadu, is in limelight these days. Recently, the Supreme Court has declared Jalli Kattu legally valid, dismissing the petition filed against this game. Let us tell you that this game is played on a large scale in the state during the Pongal festival. In fact, the Animal Welfare Board of India and People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals or PETA India had filed a petition in the Supreme Court against this game, alleging cruel treatment of bulls demanding a ban on this game. But the court said that the sport is a part of state's culture and states have taken appropriate measures to protect animals from cruelty. However, the court has made it clear that if someone commits cruelty to animals during these games, then the government will have to take necessary legal action against him. After chat GPT, AI tool Gemini is in limelight. Google has made it. However, it will be launched in the market after checking the security measures. According to Google, it is a multimodal tool. It is designed keeping in mind the future requirements like API, that is, Application Programming Interface Integration, Memory and Planning. Also, it is a modern language model with multilingual facts, improvements in coding capabilities. It is claimed that Gemini is capable of translating more than 100 languages. Let us tell you that AI tools are tools that analyze data using machine learning algorithms and then respond accordingly. Such tools help us in many of our everyday tasks like content writing, email writing, and photo designing, etc. 
रिसेंटली द फोर्थ एडिशन ऑफ बायोलैट्रल नेवल एक्सरसाइज समुद्र शक्ति वॉज हेल्ड बिटवीन इंडिया एंड इंडोनेशिया इट वॉज ऑर्गेनाइज इन बटम इंडोनेशिया इट्स ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू एक्सपैंड इंटर ऑपरेबिलिटी एंगेजमेंट एंड म्यूचुअल कोऑपरेशन बिटवीन द नेवीज ऑफ द टू कंट्रीज आई एन एस कवर थी डॉर्नियर मेरी टाइम पेट्रोल एयरक्राफ्ट एंड चेतक हेलीकॉप्टर्स पार्टिसिपेटेड इन द एक्सरसाइज Recently the government of India launched the integrated biological control laboratory at the National Institute of Plant Health Management Hyderabad. Its purpose is to overcome the adverse effects of excessive use of pesticides in various crops. Also with the aim of reducing the cost of cultivation the use of biocontrol is also included in its objectives. Let us tell you that this is a state of the art laboratory. It has production facility for bio pesticides and bio control agents. These include predators and parasitoids, entomopathogenic fungi, bio fertilizers and PV, pheromones and vegetation. An insect museum, weed museum, exhibition hall, natural farming cell etc are being built in this integrated biological control laboratory. Recently the Union Minister for Environment Forest and Climate Change has launched the My Life mobile application. Its purpose is to make youth aware of climate change by World Environment Day that is 5th June. This app is inspired by the concept of life. Significantly on 20 October 2022 Mission Life was started by the Prime Minister. It was started from Kevadia in Gujarat. The Ministry of Environment Forest and Climate Change is the central nodal ministry. for coordination and implementation at the national level through this efforts are being made to bring change in the environmental behavior of every person recently railway minister shri ashwini vaishnav has released a booklet titled standard signages at stations on indian railways it is designed keeping in mind the needs of the travelers this includes the elderly women children differently abled etc This booklet has been prepared giving priority to simple language clear font easily visible colors easy illustrations and text let us tell you that indian railways is doing the work of redevelopment of 1275 stations across india under amrit bharat station scheme recently prime minister shri narendra modi has inaugurated the international museum expo 2023 at pragati maidan in new delhi It is being organized to celebrate the 47th International Museum Day as part of the Amrit Mahotsav of Independence. Its mascot is a contemporary version of a dancing girl made of wood in the Chennapatnam art style. The expo is designed to initiate a holistic dialogue with museum professionals on museums to develop them as cultural centers playing an important role in India's cultural diplomacy. Significantly this year the theme of International Museum Day has been kept Museums Sustainability and Wellbeing National Logistics Management Seminar LogiSem 23 of the Indian Air Force was organized recently It was inaugurated by Air Chief Marshal V R Chaudhary Chief of the Air Staff The theme was leveraging emerging global supply chains to increase logistics capabilities while eliminating disruptions This seminar will help in understanding any disruptive environment properly by exchanging ideas. Recently Karnataka Director General of Police Praveen Sood has been appointed as the new director of CBI. The appointment order has specified a tenure of 2 years. Let us tell you that the director of CBI is appointed under the Delhi Special Police Establishment Act 1946. The director is appointed by a three member committee. The chairman of this committee is the prime minister. Apart from this the leader of the opposition in the Lok Sabha and the chief justice of India are included in it. Recently the Sanchar Sathi portal has been launched by the union minister. It provides a facility to the people to verify the IMEI that is international mobile equipment identity of the mobile. By using this mobile people will be able to get back their lost mobile. Let us tell you that it has been developed by the Department of Telecommunications. It is a citizen centric portal. So far more than 40 lakh fraudulent connections have been identified using this portal.